everyone welcome to my youtube channel today we will be discussing the first lecture in the series of basics of immunology let's proceed the specific learning objectives of today's lecture will be the learner will be able to explain the types of immunity differentiate the between primary and secondary immune responses and discuss about the components of immune responses immunology sir edward jenner is known as the father of immunology the term was coined by russian scientist ilya elich mekhnikov it is a very important branch of biology and medicine both it is the study of immune systems in different organisms its function is to protect us from infection through various lines of defense the organs of immune system these include the primary organs and the secondary organs the primary organs are the bone marrow and the thymus in the bone marrow the immune cell production takes place and the type of cell is also known as the b cell and these b cell undergo maturation in the bone marrow in the thymus gland the t cell maturation takes place the secondary organs of immune system include the spleen lymph nodes tonsils and peyer's patches these include malt gold called which allow immune cells to interact with antigen malt here stands for mucosa associated lymphoid tissue gold stands for gut associated lymphoid tissue and cord stands for cutaneous associated lymphoid tissues so these are various secondary organs of the immune system the components of immune system include the cells the lymphoid organs and the tissues the major histocompatibility complex proteins complement system chemical mediators so anatomically the immune system consists of different lymphoid organs and tissues they are present throughout the body and these are interconnected by blood and lymph vessels they provide various cells involved in immunity which include immunocompetent t and b cells which are the most important they are also sites where antigen is first trapped and the lymphocytes interact with it to develop an immune response so these are the various components uh, to name five of them and these include cells lymphoid organs and tissues major histocompatibility complex proteins complement system and chemical mediators now what exactly is immunity so uh, immunity is defined as the resistance offered by the host in response to microorganisms or any foreign compound and it is of two basic types the innate immunity and the acquired immunity we will look into the details of the two basic types of immunity before we go into the details of types of immunity first let us understand what are antigens antigens are substances which are invokes an immunological response to an antigen or an immunogen so any substance which is capable of eliciting an immunological response is known as an antigen or an immunogen now the antibody response will usually be selective against specific special configuration on the antigen which are called antigenic determinant sites known as the epitopes so what part of the antigen elicits an immunological response is that part is known as epitope and it goes and binds to the antibody now let us look into the types of immunity so there are two types 
innate immunity and acquired immunity acquired immunity is also known as adaptive immunity by def definition innate immunity is that type of immunity which is present since birth whereas acquired immunity is acquired during the lifetime the immune response elicited by innate immunity is very quick it occurs within minutes whereas the immune response generated by acquired immunity takes many days to develop so it develops in days after exposure prior to exposure innate immunity is not required whereas a prior exposure is always required for eliciting acquired immunity or its activation the diversity of innate immunity is limited whereas the diversity of acquired immunity is varied the antigens that are associated with innate immunity include membrane associated proteins these also include lipopolysaccharides and peptidoglycans uh, the antigens are that elicit acquired immunity are very specific and the memory component is not present in innate immunity whereas the acquired immunity shows the characteristic of memory the receptors that are involved in innate immunity are not specific and they are known as the toll like receptors whereas the acquired immunity uh, receptors are highly specific now we will look at the components of the immune system uh, and once again we will take a comparison of the primary or innate immunity and adaptive immunity so in uh, innate immunity which is the immunity by virtue of birth the components that contribute to innate immunity include neutrophils macrophages monocytes dendritic cells natural killer cells of lymphoid organ complement system proteins and physical epithelial barriers secreted enzymes so these are all the various components of the innate immunity now the t cells and b cells and the circulating antibodies form the component of adaptive immunity the mechanism uh, that is elicited by innate immunity is known as germline encoded whereas the mechanism Uh, displayed by adapt adaptive immunity is due to variation in the V D J recombination during lymphocyte development. This we can discuss in the future lectures. Response to pathogen in case of innate immunity is non-specific. It occurs rapidly within minutes to hours, and there is no memory response involved. in innate immunity whereas in adaptive immunity it is highly specific it gets better with time that is it refines over time develops over long periods memory response is faster and more robust the secretory proteins that are seen in innate immunity include lysozyme complement C reactive protein, defensins, and cytokines, to name a few. Whereas the secreted proteins in adaptive immunity include immunoglobulins and cytokines. The key features in recognition of pathogen that is involved in innate immunity is known to be done by toll-like receptors, that is TLR. they recognize they do pattern recognition uh, receptors and these recognize pathogen associated molecular patterns 
and this leads to activation of NF kappa and beta uh, examples of pathogen associated molecular patterns include lipopolysaccharides in gram negative bacteria flagellin in bacteria and nucleic acids in viruses the memory cells include activated B cells and T cells in adaptive immunity subsequent exposure to a previously encountered antigen stronger and quicker immune response is seen in adaptive immunity so these are the different components that are involved in innate and adaptive immunity now here you can see the components of innate immunity this diagram has been taken from uh, this website and the innate immunity has rapid response adaptive immunity has slow response uh, innate immunity is due to various cells like macrophages, natural killer cells, neutrophils, dendritic cells, eosinophils, basophils. The adaptive immunity is because of the antibodies generated by B cells and it is also because of T cells and the uh, natural killer T cells. So these are the different components of immune system. Now we come to the classification of acquired immunity. So acquired immunity is specific as you know, uh, which we have discussed uh, while discussing the difference between innate and acquired. This is of two types, natural and artificial. The natural and artificial acquired immunity are again of two types that is active and passive active and now let us see the difference what does natural immunity mean it means which occurs due to encounter with any pathogen so it is known as active acquired immunity when it is exposed to pathogen that develops a disease and passive natural acquired immunity is because of antibodies received from mother through the placental transfer and the immunoglobulin that is responsible for passive immunity is immunoglobulin G from placenta before birth and through milk, breast milk after birth. Artificial immunity uh, is of two types again as you know active and passive the active immune artificial immunity is because of vaccination and immunization whereas passive immunity is because of certain medicines uh, examples are antitoxins and polytoxins something like anti rabies vaccine so uh, these are the this is the classification of acquired immunity so immune response now we just discussed about two types of immune response that is the primary immune response and secondary immune response the primary immune response occurs as a result of primary contact with an antigen and in the previous slides i just defined antigen for you antigen is a substance any substance that can elicit immune response so primary immune response me occurs as a result of primary contact with antigen whereas secondary immune response occurs as a result of second and subsequent contacts with the same antigen antibody levels reaches peak within 7 to 10 days in primary immune response whereas antibody reaches peak level in 3 to 5 days in secondary immune response after the second attack. This prolonged period is required to establish immunity and secondary immune response establishes immunity in short time. 
there is rapid decline of the antibody in the uh, circulation whereas the antibody level remains high for long period in secondary immune response in primary immune response it appears mainly in the lymph nodes and spleen whereas secondary immune response appears mainly in the bone marrow followed by spleen and lymph nodes so these are the differences between primary and secondary immune responses now we'll come to immune response this is the uh, immune response curve and uh, there are two types of immune responses based on this primary and secondary immune response the primary immune response is the response that occurs following first exposure to foreign antigen so you can see this is the antigen and for the first time the whole body uh, or the uh, immune cells are getting final exposure uh, sorry initial exposure and then the antibodies are released after a certain period of time so this is the primary immune response and the primary immune response generally is because of immunoglobulin g now when the same pathogen uh, attacks for the second time there uh, there is already memory generated in our immune cells and the memory is able to recognize it's able to remember that this pathogen had attacked previously so this memory is uh, exhibited by memory b cells and on secondary exposure to the same pathogen the memory b cells are activated they differentiate into plasma cells and then the plasma cells in the bone marrow give rise to antibodies against this pathogen and this is the secondary immune response so you can see that this is a graph of primary and secondary immune response these are my references thank you for watching like comment and share and subscribe to my channel.